Today I fucked up by drinking too much at a New Year's Eve party and accidentally having a threesome. So this actually happened New Year's Eve. Reposting now because my friend's post was removed for rules. My first post was removed for rules. Oops. I had a party with my friends Lance and Bobby at their house with myself and my girlfriend Alice. Account is a throwaway because, well, shit, I screwed up enough stuff as it is. It was a fun night, lots of snacks, lots of drinking. We went through probably five or six beers each and were on the road to being sloshed when the eastern coast of the U.S. approached midnight. We're in Texas. So we watched their countdown and did shots at midnight there. After that, we kept doing shots and it got kind of blurry. After our midnight passed, I kissed my girlfriend, of course, and Lance kissed his wife, and we all sat down again. I was on the couch with Alice when she starts cooing in my ear and kissing at my neck and letting her hands wander. I was too drunk to care that we were in front of my friends, and they seemed too drunk to give a crap either. Now, as we wound down, Alice and I were no were in near driving condition, so we decided just to crash on their couch. So, I, so Lance and Bobby go into their bedroom, and Alice and I curl up on the couch. We had originally agreed not to fool around, thinking it would be weird in their home. A few minutes later, though, we heard giggling and then some other noises through the walls and we realized they were having sex. So we chuckled a bit and started getting heated ourselves. Sexy time ensued and we got a bit lo louder than intended. Just as we were getting started, we hear the bedroom door open and we, free we froze on the couch a few seconds later. Bobby emerged from the hallway and saw us in all our glory. While she was staring at us with her jaw down, I noticed she was in a very sexy teddy that show off her ample chest. Now, my girlfriend is pretty ample-chested, too. It's my weakness, so now I'm staring at my friend's wife's tits while cupping my girlfriend's. Awkward. <laughs> However, body just, Bobby just smugly smiles and starts walking towards us, wobbling slightly and leering at us. She complains that Lance was too drunk and she's horny right now as she reaches us. Now, I'm drunk and without pants, quite obviously aroused. Alice was topless and had her skirt hiked up, panties missing, and Bobby standing there, eyeing us in lingerie. I'm not even sure who moved first, so we ended up in some sort of drunken threesome. Then suddenly, the lights came on. Lance is standing there, looking rather drunk and enraged, as he realizes his wife is on my lap and my face is bur buried in her chest while my girlfriend was watching and taking care of herself. This led to a three-hour argument that culminated in Lance hitting me, and me being sober enough to finally drive home. Now Alice has sobered up too and feels really uncomfortable about what happened and isn't talking to me. Lance and Bobby aren't talking to me. My face hurts and I'm hungover. Am I the asshole for refusing to spend New Year's Eve with my family? I, 21 female, live in another city from where I was born. I decided to go where my best friend lives and spend New Year's Eve with her. Her boyfriend and some of their friends. I just wanted to get to her and spend some time together. Work doesn't allow me a lot of free time, so I haven't been visiting home weekly like I used to, but I do go once every two or three weeks. But I want to have fun, because it's supposed to be a celebration, and at home I would sit on the couch, eat, and be my brother's driver while he has fun with his friends, because he told my mom that's what he wanted to do. Take me with him to be his driver, so my mom, a fucking course, because it's her baby boy, told me that she would like this more too. I told her plainly no because I want to spend time with my friends. I don't want to go with him and sit around feeling awkward around his friends. She told me to do whatever I want, that I always do this and choose friends over family. It's not like that. She just makes me the villain here. It's just a stupid holiday after all and I'm spending Christmas at home. But it's not okay because I'm not spending New Year's too. I just need space. She's extremely needy and I just can't do this anymore. So am I the asshole? Did I make the wrong decision? Am I the asshole for causing a family rift over my nieces and nephews sleeping in my bed? I, 22 female, live with my parents. I'm the youngest sibling and all my other siblings have moved out a while ago, so it's just me and my parents. I buy all my own food and I do my fair share of housework, and I also pay rent. Back in October, I went on a three-day trip with some of my friends. When I came home, my bed had food stains and crumbs in it, and lots of my belongings were moved around or on the floor. My parents explained that they had my nephew, age, flo age four, sleep in my room while I was gone. No, you're not the asshole because you pay rent. That means your little piece, your little corner of the house is your corner of the house. You have the right to be upset about it. You have the right to want to come home to your room being exactly the way that you left it. You have the right to come home with your bed to not have food stains and crumbs in it. No, you're not the asshole.
I explained that I don't mind my nieces or nephews sleeping in my bed when I'm not there, but that I don't appreciate coming home to my room being a mess and my things being moved around. I tried to be as calm as possible, but I think it was pretty obvious that I was irritated. My parents told me to lighten up and that I was overreacting and that it's just my baby nephew. Well, why y'all don't have him in your room? Could it possibly be because you know that he's going to leave food and stains and stuff on the bed? Last month, I went on a weekend trip for my coworker's bachelorette party. And once again, I came home to my room being a mess. I even found not one, but two very chewed up pacifiers in my bed and more old food. I was very annoyed and I told my parents that I'm really not okay with this and that I wish they would at least wash my sheets after the kids have been in my bed. Once again, they said that I'm overreacting. They called me a control freak and a neat freak. You're entitled to that. You are entitled to wanting your area that you're paying for to be neat. So if that's what the fuck you need to call it, then let it be that. But wash my fucking sheets after you put the nasty ass kids in the bed. They even got my sisters involved and they said that I'm being a baby about my nibblings using my bed when I'm not even home. No one in my family is on my side and they think I'm being childish. This escalated when my sister 31 called me to talk about the situation. She lectured me and said that it's my parents' house and they can use the space how they like. She said that I'm acting like a spoiled brat and if I was her child, she'd kick me out of the house. I fired back at her and asked what on earth I'm paying rent for if not for my space. Am I the asshole? Absolutely not. My question is, why are they putting the four-year-old in only your room? You said that you have siblings. I know there was more than one bedroom in that house. So why, out of all the spaces in the house, do the kids have to only be in your space? In your space. And how the fuck are they expecting you to be okay with the fact that they are leaving these toddlers in your room to fuck up your stuff and not even bothering to try to pretend to clean it up? They just leave it where the fuck it's at and they expect you to continuously to come home and clean up after they've watched your nibblings. Absolutely the hell not. You are not the asshole for this. Tell your parents that you're that you're getting ready to move out. Let them know that you're getting ready to move out and then start deducting a certain amount of money from the rent that you're paying them for the fact that you have to clean up your room every single time that you leave. Every time you leave, they wait until you leave to bring them over to fuck up your room. Tell them that you're getting ready to move and you're going to start deducting a cleaning fee from the rent that you're paying them. Your family is really, really entitled. And what makes my ass itch is the fact that all of this could literally be fixed by them cleaning up after the fact, after the kids that they leave in your room. All they have to do is clean up the mess that they're allowing these kids to make. Why the fuck are they feeding a four-year-old in your bed any goddamn way? Any fucking way. Why are you feeding a four-year-old? Like, all they have to do is apologize for the situation and clean up after themselves. And this could literally go away. But instead, they would rather gossip about it. Spread it to everybody in the fucking family. So everyone's now lecturing you and telling you all types of shit as if you're the one in the fucking wrong. When all they have to do is clean up after themselves. I'm so sorry. Am I the asshole for wanting to break up with my girlfriend after her ex's funeral? So my girlfriend and I have been together for about four years. She used to be close friends with her ex. However, he tried to make a move on her while she and I were together, so she cut off their friendship. They knew each other for about 10 years. They were high school sweethearts and stayed together throughout college. They broke up because he did not want to have kids. He died recently and my girlfriend was invited to the funeral. While I wasn't happy, so to speak, to see my girlfriend cry about this guy, I swallowed my emotions and offered my full support. She asked me to come with her. Here's where things get messy. She kept talking about how she wishes they never broke up in the first place and that she's never met someone who she loved as much as him. She made a speech about how she says that if things had been different, they'd be a happy family with children. I had to force myself not to say anything then. Now we're back home and she hasn't said anything about what she said. I'm so close to just leaving, but I don't know if she only said that out of grief. So am I the asshole for wanting to break up with my girlfriend? I made a comment to my ex-husband when we signed our divorce, and his girlfriend now accuses me of being the reason he didn't propose to her on Christmas. Hello and Happy New Year. My ex-husband and I, both late 40s, were a real love story for 17 years. He was my world, and I loved everything about him. I thought he loved me too, 
But about two years ago, for about two months, he was changed. The change was so palpable that I knew it in my heart there was another woman. He stopped kissing me good morning or good night, stopped asking me on dates and always declined when I did. He didn't doze off with his head in my lap to a movie every evening, always missing the end. Now he even sat on the other couch. He stopped saying he loved me and he stopped texting me during the day. I didn't know what to do other than wait and see and sure enough, after two months, he told me he was in love and wanted a divorce. I was heartbroken, but I couldn't do anything about it. I would never beg someone to love me no matter how much I loved them. He moved out and started the divorce. His new girlfriend, early 30s, moved in with him not long after. My ex-husband is very successful and our divorce was finalized a couple of weeks ago. I don't know what got into me. I have kept civil and prideful during the separation. I was surprised that he was with his lawyer because I thought he just signed and didn't need to be there. I signed and then I looked at him for the first time in two years and just without giving myself the time to stop and keep my dignity, I smiled and said that he now lost the last woman who he would know for sure ever loved and saw him for him and not for his money or assets. He was smiling at first, probably relieved that I finally was fine enough to look at him again. He complained to our son that I never looked at him anymore. His smile faltered and turned into a shock. Then he started crying. I was terrified of what I did and just left almost running. I got a text from his girlfriend this morning with many insults about me, my character, and my looks and age. Because he was supposed to propose on Christmas with all family present, but he didn't. He now refuses to talk about it with her or any of her family, and she means that it was my fault. I ruined their relationship. I blocked her, but I can't help but wonder if I really did ruin their relationship. I even wonder if I care. All I know is that he looked so old and pathetic. I wonder if I ever really knew him or loved him. I'm an asshole for only paying for myself when my fiance and future in-laws invited me to a New Year's Eve dinner at a scale restaurant. I, female 32, just got engaged to my fiance, male 37, Sam. We do not live together because we're waiting till marriage, given he and his family are highly conservative Christians, but they're really nice and lovable people. I had, I had plans to spend New Year's Eve with, with Sam, but he said he was out for New Year's dinner celebrations with his parents, then called me again, inviting me to join them, and I happily did. His parents... <laughs> And we're shaking his head. I know I was already confused at this part. His parents were there. They welcomed me and ordered many dishes and desserts and drinks. We celebrated and had a great time. And that is until it was time to pay. I pulled my wallet out of my bag, letting them know that we'll split the check between us. Sam mumbled, no, you don't have to. We invited you, but I insisted. He and his parents then stared at me. I asked what was wrong and both mother-in-law and father-in-law said they didn't have money on them. I was shocked. I turned to Sam and he said he too forgot his wallet at home and didn't bring enough money to cover even a round of drinks. His dad then laughed nervously. All right, so I guess we should get, let the doctor pay. I was taken aback. I said, I'm sorry, but no, this is just too much money to spend on one dinner by myself and I didn't think I was expected to pay the entire bill. Sam said I should pay and he'd pay me back later, but I said no, since I know he will have to get a job to pay that much money. I said, I'm sorry, but this isn't the first time I've been put in situations by him and his family where I'm expected to rescue them after they somehow forgot their wallets and expected others to pay hundreds of hundreds for their extravagant dinner. I told them I'm only I'll only pay for what I had and that's it. He and his parents were shocked. They started arguing about how I have the potential to pay right there and then, but I was acting as if they were strangers, not family. But that doesn't mean I'm obligated to pay. How could someone go out to a fancy restaurant, order so many dishes, desserts, and drinks without bringing money? Sam begged that I just do it and called called it a night, but I ref Sam begged that I just do it and call it a night, but I refused. The argument got heated, then I got up and walked out. Sam called later at 2 a.m. basically yelling that I ruined New Year's Eve celebrations and made his parents suffer because I refused to pay the entire bill and instead acted selfishly and paid only for myself after they were gracious enough to invite me. I told him how unfair it was for me to even pay. For me to pay, even if I had a good salary, doesn't mean I want to spend it all on a fancy dinner. He didn't reply. He just said he'll pray that my parent that his parents will let this go and not resent me after I basically damaged the relationship with them. 
I feel I felt awful thinking I should have covered the bill instead of leaving. Am I the asshole? Oh my Am I the asshole for refusing to force my son to apologize to my wife for ruining her New Year's toast speech? Important context. My son, Finn, 18, is from a previous relationship. Since early childhood, I had full custody. His mother is not in the picture. We were both young when, we, when he was born, so the childhood was a little unstable for a bit. However, I have my life together now. I got married when he was seven, and together, me, male 37, and my wife, Mary, female 40, live as a blended family with my two stepsons, Cody, 16, and Lucas, 18. Yet I have noticed some issues. Finn is a very sensitive kid, and Cody and Lucas are nothing like this. So, altogether, they tend to get along for a bit, like most kids do, and then have fights. It's always Cody and Lucas versus Finn, which is a bit upsetting, but again, kids fight. Everyone gets discipline, and these fights are pretty normal stuff, arguing about games, TV, etc. However, recently I've noticed them get a little political. The boys tend to disagree about topics like these, so I've banned it at the dinner table. Finn then came out to us as bisexual this year. My wife is Christian, and so are the boys. I've always been unlabeled, open to it, but not entirely into organized religion. Due to this, my wife used unfortunate phrasing, like calling him confused and saying that he was too young to know for sure. I told her at the time to respect how he identifies. My logic is, so what if it changes? You need to support your kids regardless. So that was that, dropped. The boys seemed confused by it, but they didn't say anything in front of me after that. Overall, I thought it went well. All the worrying behavior Finn displayed, staying out late, being withdrawn, etc., seemed to fade away for a good week, like a weight had been lifted. Then it started up again and came to a head on New Year's Eve. My wife traditionally cooks a big dinner for New Year's. We have a few family members over, and we all say things we are thankful to God for and how we're going to improve ourselves. She was giving her speech, which was all about how family was the most important thing in life and how we should be grateful to each other, to which Finn gets visibly upset at the point of tears. He stands up and says that it was ironic, considering the things they say to him. I asked what he meant, and it all came out that the boys had started making gay jokes frequently, and that my wife, separate to that, had been starting to scare him by showing him worrying statistics about LGBT youth bisexual men. I was stunned and disturbed when this came to light. Finn was crying and left the room after exposing all the things they'd been saying without my knowledge. I left the party to comfort him while my wife continued hosting. So my wife thinks he's humiliated her in front of the family, ruined the night and overreacted to things and thinks he should apologize to her, the boys and the family. I, however, have refused and this has caused a big argument between us. Am I the asshole for refusing to make him say sorry? I think my wife owes him one. Boyfriend wants another child, but no marriage. We have an adorable two-year-old son together and my lovely stepdaughter, who's 10. Backstory, we live together. He covers most of the expenses. Chores and childcare are shared, with me doing most of it. I work a well-paying full-time job and he has his own business. We had our fair share of issues, but we have always stuck by each other's side. He got divorced eight years ago. I've seen the decree and she's engaged to be married to her long-term partner. We've been together for 5.5 years. It's obviously bothered me that he hasn't proposed. I have made him aware of my expectations that I don't see myself having another child without being married first. Problem is, I'm trying to be okay with the current situation and not let the fact that he hasn't proposed and the resentment erode the relationship. I have told him that I don't feel like I have his full commitment and that it makes me feel not entirely safe and also not valued. I have dropped the conversation because I don't want to make him want to marry me. I want him to be thrilled and look forward to it. He says he sees himself spending the rest of his life with me and having a big family together. Now he's talking about having another child. His parents are bringing it up too. Not only am I not ready to have another child, but I won't be ready without the commitment of marriage. I didn't do things the right way the first time around because I was younger and immature, but I want to rectify and make sure I treat myself with love and respect. When he brought it up, I told him jokingly that I'm not ready to have another child and I need more time. He said I'll have those two rings after we've had our third child. That's how he'll know I'll be there and won't ever leave. That really hurt my feelings. I felt like he doesn't value me as a partner. Why do I have to prove that I'm worthy of commitment by having more kids? I'm not sure where to go from here. 
Would I be the asshole for not going to my friend's wedding after my husband was uninvited? I'm really struggling with what to do here, so I'm looking for advice. My husband and I were originally invited to the wedding of my friend Simon and his fiance Julie, which will be four months from now. We got the invitation a couple months ago and immediately RSVP'd yes. I was excited for us to go. I even had our outfits picked out. Today, Simon sent me a message telling me that due to unexpected constraints, he and Julie are downsizing their wedding and need to resend some invitations including some people's plus ones. So my husband's invitation has been rescinded, but I am still invited to come. Simon and I have been friends for six years. I always considered us pretty close. We used to work together for four years and have always kept in touch, sending each other lengthy voice messages with updates about our lives, sending Christmas cards, phone calls, etc. I had met his fiance a couple of times and my husband and I were on good terms with both of them. My husband and I have been together for eight years and have children, a dog, and a house together. I envisioned being couple friends with Simon and Julie in the long term and thought their future children would be family friends with our children. I am shocked and hurt that my husband has been cut out from the guest list. I thought Simon saw him as a friend too, not just me. And more than that, I didn't consider him as my plus one. He's not a date I'm bringing. We're a package deal. We already RSVP'd and we're planning to go. Is it not very rude of Simon and Julie to uninvite him like this? Anyways, I am so shocked and hurt and honestly don't want to go to their wedding. And I don't really want to continue my friendship with them either. I have never dealt with something like this before. If I did go, it would be mainly out of obligation at this point. There is also the possibility that this isn't coming from Simon and that he is being put in a tough spot. So I do feel some sympathy if that were the case. And I just hate being rude in general. Would I be the asshole if I changed my RSVP to no because of this? Simon's message did include this as an option. He even specified the link where I could update my RSVP. When I was 17 years old, I had a guy dedicate a song to me. Get ready with me story time. I used to motto back in the day and this is where I met the guy. The crazy part is when I met him, he had a girlfriend. I'm also the queen of rejecting men. And so this guy, nunca le pele. I never gave him the attention. I never thought he was cute. And plus he had a girlfriend. So I didn't even want to mess with that. At one point, his sister and I were really close friends. And she also used to model with us. One thing I forgot to mention is that this modeling was runway modeling. So we would basically practice in heels and then every weekend we would go somewhere wherever we were booked and we would model the clothing. Almost a year into me modeling with this company and this instructor, a couple that I've been talking to you guys about basically was in a rough patch. They were like on the verge to break up. A couple weeks later, I ended up finding out that they broke up and I honestly never really had a bond or relationship with him and I never cared to, especially because he was in a relationship. But because we did model together, I would at least say hi. We all made sure to say hi to everyone who was a part of the modeling class we would always invite our families and my family consists of my parents and my two brothers so my brother eventually became best friends with the guy who dedicated the song to me it was, we're gonna call him andrew so my brother became best friends with him and i was already really close to andrew's sister because they were best friends and then i was best friends with andrew's sister we would always go to each other's houses whether i was going over to their house or whether they were coming over to my house so i don't know if it's because we all used to hang out a lot that he started to have a crush on me i just remember somebody telling me that andrew has a crush on me and i was like no like this can't be happening especially because i was literally like there whenever he was in the relationship with the other girl you know fast forward maybe a year or two this guy still had a crush on me and i just didn't want to you know put myself through that i didn't want any drama with you know his ex because i don't know if they were still talking behind the scenes and again, I just wasn't interested in this guy. And back then, you guys, even now, like, it's so hard for me to actually give a guy the attention. Like, I'm so picky. So although I knew this guy liked me, I just didn't want to give him a chance. So we got to the point where Andrew started to shoot his shot on his own because although he knew that I knew that he had a crush on me and other people would tell me, 
and that wasn't working out he took it upon himself to shoot his shot this guy was not giving up you guys i wasn't giving in and he was not giving up he tried everything and anything to convince me for me to finally just give him a chance give him an opportunity but i would not you guys even to this day it's so hard for me to just talk to a guy because if i'm not interested in you then i'm not gonna open my heart out to you you know like i don't want to waste my time and i don't want to waste your time this man was still not giving up and it got to the point where everyone started to get involved and they were like ash just give andrew a chance like he really likes you like he's like your guys's family already knows each other he was like like um andrew's family really likes you like he's surprised that you guys aren't even dating right now and i was like oh my god the pressure is so real and i again i just didn't want to like give in you guys and then finally i was like fine i'll give in but it was one of those things where like i gave in and i gave him a chance in a shot although i didn't want to so i feel like i forced myself when you force yourself in a situation trust me it never goes right at this point we were talking now and i quote talking because i forced myself in this little relationship or this talking stage so andrew and i end up going out and then we ended up coming back to his house and when we went out you guys i wasn't feeling it i just felt like he was more of a friend than anything else and so i knew the moment that i was gonna get to his place i was just gonna tell him that i wasn't feeling it you want to mention that i did bring it up to him way before that i didn't want to give him a chance because i wasn't feeling it and he kept on like begging me you guys he was like come on ash like just give it a shot like you'll never know if you don't try and i feel like that's what just made me want to give in so we get to his house and i ended up getting down because i would always say hi to his parents as i was gonna leave he goes let's watch a movie and i was like you know it's okay i'm just gonna go home and then he's like no let's watch a movie so i stayed and we watched the movie and tell me why like 10 minutes into watching the movie he leaned in and we kissed and i was like oh my god no so we kissed and on my end i just didn't feel anything and i guess he felt some type of way when we kissed next day that's when he sent me a message of a song and he goes i'm dedicating this song to you the song is called y cambio mi suerte by vilan garcia <laughs> The part where it says Cuando dijiste no puedo me aferré I feel like that, my opinion Is all the times that I told him no But he never gave up I feel like that's what that part of the song means reason he sent me this song was because of this the song is really really beautiful before he sent it to me i didn't even know that this song existed nothing ever happened between him and i i just ended up cutting off because i wasn't feeling it and i just felt like it wasn't fair for me and fair for him and yes it might be a little bit messed up that i kept it going this long but to be fair i literally told him that i wasn't feeling it from the very beginning but he was like no ass just give it some time and i was like fine so in a way it was both of our thoughts that is the times somebody dedicated a song to me and if someone has dedicated a song to you please write it down in the comments because i would love to hear the song that is the end of my story time i hope you guys have a beautiful and lovely day wherever you guys may be thank you always for showing me so much love and support that is the end of today's video and i'll see you in the next one bye am i the asshole for taking my grandchildren to disney for the first time without the mother and refusing to apologize when confronted. My son made this account and asked me to post the story because he claims my normal meter is skewed and that the internet is going to tell me that I'm an asshole. I recently babysat my grandchildren, five and four, for a period of four nights and five days so that my son and his wife could attend a wedding in Mexico and spend a few days on vacation. They approached me because her mother wouldn't be available. I initially said that I wasn't comfortable with that. It seemed like a long time to watch the kids. And she has point blank told me that the woman's family is more important than the man's. So I was irritated that I was being asked and not her mother. I will admit that I did give in when my son became very emotional, but I felt and feel like they were being manipulative. While I had the kids, I was invited to a birthday at Epcot and I wanted to go. It didn't even occur to me to run it by my son or daughter-in-law as I had the kids for an extended period of time. And obviously they knew the kids would be going where I went. My daughter-in-law has previously mentioned wanting to save up for Disney, but she said that about a lot of things, and she's never made me aware it was something that was special to her. Also, it was Epcot. It's not like I took them to Magic Kingdom and they had some magical moment of seeing their favorite characters. I don't think you're the asshole at all because 
if you manipulate me into watching your kids, I know you don't think I'm going to stay in the house for five days simply because your crotch goblins are with me. No, if you didn't want me to take your kids while I was going, you shouldn't have asked me to watch them because as long as I have them, where I go, they go. When they returned and found out, my daughter-in-law was furious and she burst into tears. She said, I stole one of her kids first and called me entitled. To be honest, I didn't react well to being called entitled when she was the one who had previously demanded that I babysit. My son asked me to apologize as she was distraught over missing their first Disney trip. I declined and I asked them to leave. My son reached out again and said that I should have asked for something that big and his wife feels robbed. This is what happens when you ask someone to watch your kids for an ex extended period of time. It's a possibility that you gonna miss out on fucking first. So if she took them to a restaurant they had never been to before, would you flip the fuck out? You're going to miss out on a lot of things when you demand people to watch your kids. I know my daughter-in-law is a huge Disney person, but it was Epcot, not quintessential Disney. And I don't feel I should have to miss out on a birthday party I wanted to attend. I told my son that I'm not apologizing for anything. And maybe they should think about how they made me feel when they didn't respect my initial no to babysitting. My son feels like Reddit is going to show me the error of my ways. I don't think you're the asshole at all in this situation because they manipulated you into watching their kids. And it's not like you took them to Disney World just to piss off their parents because you knew their mother was going to lose her fucking mind over it. You were invited to a party that you had all rights to fucking attend and you chose to go even though you had your grandchildren in tow. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Like I would understand if you had malicious intentions afterwards for taking them. I completely get it why they would be upset, but this ain't that. This is not that. You wanted to go to a party and you went to a party. 